Hi, I'm Adolph Oliver, and here's our first look at exponents to remind you how they work. First off, we want to remember what an exponent is. Let's give you an example here. I can write 2 to the third power. Well, the exponent is the little number that's up on top here. Folks call this either the exponent, okay, or you can call it the power. You'll hear both of these terms used. The main number down below here is what is known as the base. That's a term that we use in math for the main number. So we would say this is 2 raised to the third power. Okay, the power of the x or the exponent is 3, and the base is 2. Now, here's the thing you need to remember about how exponents work. The exponent tells you how many times you have the base number multiplying itself. So, for instance, 2 cubed means the following. 2 times 2 times 2. There are a total of three 2's here multiplying each other. That's what the exponent means. It tells you how many of these base guys are multiplying each other. Well, what does this equal? 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 2 cubed, then, happens to equal 8. Now, one of the things about exponents is you want to remember that the exponent only affects the guy that's immediately in front of it. So let's give you a little example here. Let's say we had 4 in squared. Of course, variables can have exponents just like numbers do. Well, here's the idea. The power 2 only affects the guy immediately in front namely the n. That's the only thing being squared. The 4 is too far away. It's not being squared. Well, all numbers that you've ever written, whether they're plain numbers or variables, officially have an exponent. If you don't see the exponent, like the 4 here, we don't see anything, then you assume that the exponent is 1. So this is 4 to the first power, which means just a single 4. That's exactly what we have. But the only guy being squared here is the n. Now, this is different if you turn around and put parents around the 4n and then have the square outside the parents. Once again, the power only affects the guy that's immediately in front but what's immediately in front now is the parents. So what's going on here is we're squaring the parents, and what this would equal is 4n and parents times 4n and parents. In other words, we're squaring the whole parents. This is what you've got. And, of course, if you turned around and multiplied this out, 4 times 4 is 16, n times n is n squared. So it makes a big difference whether you have parents around the number and you're squaring the parents or whether you just have 4n squared. In this case, with no parents, the 2, of course, the exponent always affects just the guy in front. Well, the only guy in front is the n. The 4 is not being squared. Okay, the 4 has its own power, which is namely a 1, so the answer here is simply 4n squared. But if you had the 4n in parents and you were squaring the parents, again, the power only affects the guy immediately in front. That's the parents. So that means you've got 4n times 4n, which is 16n squared. This is a subtle but very important point. Now, to go a little further with that, let's take a look at when we have minus signs in here. Let's say I've got minus 3, and I'm going to be squaring this. There we go. And let's say that I've got now minus 3 in parents, and I'm squaring it. Okay, well, the 2 here, the exponent in the first case, again, only hits the guy immediately in front. 
Well, the only thing immediately in front is a 3. The minus sign is too far away. So, the only thing being squared is the 3. The answer on this is the single minus sign, but then 3 squared gives you 9. Well, this guy is different. Okay, what's happening on this second guy is, again, the power is only affecting the guy immediately in front, but what's immediately in front here is the parents. So that means this particular one then, we've got negative 3 in parents multiplying negative 3 in parents. The uh, 2 is hitting the parents, so we've got two of these multiplying each other. Well, the two minus signs combine to give me a plus, so the answer is plus 9. These are subtle little differences, but very important things that we'll be running into many, many times in the future. Remember again, the rule here is, is that the exponent only hits the guy immediately in front. If there's a sign, it's too far away. If there's somebody else, they're too far away. Now, on the other hand, if you want everybody to be squared, simply put everybody in parents and square the parents. So keep this difference in mind right here. Now, returning back to some other questions about exponents. Why are exponents useful? Well, we've seen this. What if you have the same number multiplying itself a whole bunch of times here? Okay, for instance, 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Well, it's much more convenient to rewrite this. These are all the same base. So we have the base 5, and since there are four of them multiplying each other, we can write this as 5 to the fourth power. That's the real use. Now, later on, we're going to be bumping into roots. And in particular, we'll, in this beginning algebra class, talk about square roots. And square roots can be written with the square root sign like this. Now, I embellish my square root signs a little bit. I like to put a back door on here to indicate where the end uh, of the value inside the square root is. And I put another little uh, doohickey bob on the front here. Most folks just write a square root sign coming down, going up, and across. You'll see different versions. They all mean the same thing. Now, square roots mean we're undoing a square. Anytime you square something, you want to be able to undo it. So, for instance, 4 squared would be 4 times 4. Okay, 4 times 4, which, of course, equals 16. What if I want to unsquare this 16? Well, I use a square root. I put the 16 inside the square root symbol. And the square root of this unsquares it, and it gives me the answer 4 back again. Now, there's a lot more to the story of square roots. And we also have not just square roots, but cube roots and fourth roots. For instance, if we wanted to unfourth root this guy, we would use a fourth root. We'll be hitting roots a lot more later in the class, but I wanted to remind you that roots are just the opposite of exponents. And we'll see in algebra a lot of cases where we have operations that are the opposites of each other. Okay, well now let's take a look at some uh, examples that we could see in our homework on this. For instance, here's an example where you would just be asked to write this using an exponent. And, of course, this, again, is what we pointed out, uh, the reason that exponents are important. They're a nice shorthand. It's a lot longer to write this out. But we can turn around and say, well, there are one, two, three of these sixes multiplying each other. So, in the exponent notation, I can write that as six to the third power. And this is a lot more compact to write than writing all of this out. Well, uh, you can even have other types of bases. Here's an example where the base all the way through here is the 5V. We see it in each one of these. They're all exactly the same. So, to be able to write this in exponent notation, 
the first thing is the whole base is 5V, so you'd want to put parents around it. Here it is. And there's a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of these. So that means I'd write 5V with a 7 outside. And remember, of course, now what this means is, is that the power only affects the parents here. So there'd be a total of seven of these five V's multiplying each other. Well, that's example, exactly what we had up above here. So again, this exponent business is a nice notation. Now, of course, we'll be learning lots of other properties about exponents as we go on further in the elementary algebra. But let's point out to you what's going here. This is 4 to the 4th times 4 to the 3rd. We can rewrite each one of these guys into what it means. Here, I've got a total of four fours multiplying each other, so let's write those down. One, two, three, and four of them. Well, four to the fourth means four fours multiplying each other. Well, over here, I've got four to the third. That means I've got three of these fours multiplying each other, four times four times four. And of course, remember, there was this multiplication dot in between the two, so there it is. So look what I end up with here, a whole bunch of fours multiplying each other, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can, of course, write this as four to the seventh. Well, there's a nice little shortcut you'll learn later on, but you can see it simply here. You don't have to spread these guys out and write them all like this. You can just think of it this way. Well, I've got a total of four fours here, and I've got three more of them here, so this four combined with this three would give me a total of seven, just like I wrote it out here. And you can simply just write the answer as four to the seventh, noting that you'd have a total of seven of these. Well, that same type of process can be used in this next example here. Okay, instead of writing four eighths under here and three eighths, I can say, well, I've got the same base here. It's eight, so I've just got a whole bunch of eights multiplying each other. I've got four of them here, and I've got three more here, so that would be a total of seven. So eight to the seventh power. Well, this works even when you have just variables. Okay, here I've got x cubed times x squared. Remember, the variables next to each other means they are multiplying. You could put a multiplication dot here if you wanted, but you don't need to. Well, we've got the same base. We've got x's. I've got three of them multiplying each other here. I've got two more here, so how many total do I have multiplying each other? Well, these three x's and two more of them, that's a total of five. So very simply, this is x to the fifth. Okay, well, we're going to start seeing combinations of uh, numbers and variables, and we'll see them having powers like we see here. And so this is simple to deal with once you know how to work with it. Notice the 7 and the 4 here. You don't see exponents, so officially the exponent would be 1 in both of these, which means this is just a single 7 and this is just a single 4, just like you see them here. Well, what do you do? You multiply the plain numbers together. 7 times 4 is 28. There we've done the number part. Then go get the letters. Well, I've got four ends here multiplying each other. And, of course, this guy here without an exponent, we know officially has an exponent of one. So there's a single end here, and there's four ends here, and there's a multiplication dot between indicating everybody's multiplying everybody. Well, the four ends here plus one more here gives me a total of five of these ends. So I can turn around and use my exponent to write that final answer simply. 28 into the fifth. Well, let's get some fractions involved here. Notice that in this problem, I've got 2 to the fourth times 2 to the third upstairs here, and then about dividing by 2 to the third. Well, as you've seen, we officially have a total of 7 
twos multiplying each other upstairs and only three of them downstairs. And of course, what you can do with fractions is go ahead and do some reducing. Well, if we did this the long way, I'd write it out like this. 2 times 2 times 2. There's 3 of them. There's 4 of them. There's 5 of them. There's 6 of them. There's 7. Remember, upstairs I've got 4 twos. That's the 4 of them here. Times 3 more of them. Now, downstairs, 2 cubed means I've got 3 of these. 2 times 2 times 2. So there's the same problem written out uh, with all the individual twos. And now, if you saw something like this, you'd say, well, this is real easy. I just can reduce here. This two goes against this one, and I can take this next two against this one, and I can reduce this two against this one. Well, I've reduced everybody downstairs. So when you have a one downstairs, the answer is just what's left upstairs. And notice what I have left is one, two, three, four of these twos. So I could write the answer as two to the fourth power. Well, you can get the same thing without going through all this extra work. We did this to demonstrate to you what's really happening. But go back up here. Notice I have to reduce, and there's three twos down here. Well, I can reduce them against the three twos up here. Reduce all of these guys at once. That takes out all of these guys up here at once. I have a one downstairs, so my answer is just going to be the upstairs. And up here I have two to the fourth times one, which of course is just two to the fourth. So there's the same answer, getting it quicker. But you can see why it works. Okay, well, that being the case, let's look at some more examples. We'll be doing more of this stuff in the future. Remember, this is a fraction, and what we want to be able to do with the fraction is reduce it. There's a multiplication dot downstairs, so these two guys downstairs are multiplying each other. There's a single guy upstairs. Okay, let's do some reducing. The first thing I can do is I can reduce this 2 against one of the 4s. Let's say I do it against this guy, and 2 goes into 4 twice, so I end up with a 2 down here. Well, the next thing is, I've got 3Ms upstairs. I could reduce them against these 3Ms right here. So let's take them all out at once. Here they go. And now, let's put together what's left. This is how we're going to get these answers quicker. Well, upstairs, I just have 1 times 1, which is 1. Downstairs, let's multiply the numbers all together. 2 times 1 is 2, times 4 is 8. And there is a single M left. So there's my final answer, 1 over 8M. And what I've been able to do is reduce, but I reduced using the exponents. Okay, one last example here. And again, we'll be seeing a lot more of this type of stuff in the future. Uh, let's look at this problem. In this one, we have two guys upstairs. And there's a multiplication dot in between, many indicating they're all multiplying each other. There's a single guy downstairs. Well, let's do some reducing. The 3 would reduce into the 6, for instance. So 3 goes once here, and the 6, it goes twice. Well, remember, of course, you can keep reducing numbers if you've got more that you can reduce. This 2, of course, will reduce into the 4, so we continue on. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice. Okay, I've reduced the numbers down as far as I can. Now, there's a single R downstairs. Remember, you don't see the exponent, so if you don't see it, you assume it to be 1. So there's a single R. I've got 4 R's over here, and I've got 3 of them here. Well, I can reduce this one guy against either one of those. Let's do it the guy in the end. He's a little closer. So I reduce this one R. Well, there were three of them here. If I reduce one out, that leaves two of them left. Well, now, notice we've reduced everything downstairs. The downstairs equals one, and whenever the downstairs is one, the answer is just what your upstairs is. Let's put the numbers back together first. One times two is two. Now... 
Let's put the variables together. I've got a total of four R's here. And I've got two left over here, so these four R's plus two more of them here would mean I have a total of six R's all multiplying each other. And, of course, I can write that using the exponent, R to the sixth. Well, we'll be doing a lot more with exponents as we go on, and we'll even be working with their reverses, the roots as well. But uh, that's as far as we're going at the moment.